What advice do you have for, for people that are in the workforce? Well, give them the opportunity. Give yourself the opportunity. Uh, be proactive. Uh, some of the products that we have launched could not have been launched without a proactive approach from the team members. Really? Absolutely. If, if, you're not, if you have ideas, don't think of them as potentially stupid or less important. We're always, always eager to learn and develop ourselves and listen. This episode is proudly brought to you by Mapper Forwards Workshop. It's time to become a coffee consultant. Learn how to diversify your revenue streams and create freedom from your day job while saying goodbye to that alarm clock forever by becoming a consultant within the coffee industry or directly to consumers who have shifted towards home brewing and home roasting. Protect your income from challenging times in the coffee value chain by taking this course today. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for details. Powered by DXB Live and World of Coffee Dubai, Mapper Forward is proud to be the official podcast partner of World of Coffee Dubai in 2024 for a second year in a row. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is the second last conversation on our series at World of Coffee Dubai. And I am privileged to welcome back somebody who was on the podcast last year, Asam Al Awam from Roasting House in Saudi Arabia. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me once again. And it's fantastic to be back. It's my pleasure. You are building a very interesting business over in Saudi Arabia. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yes. And uh, I think we're going to make it a tradition that whenever you're at a trade show, when I'm doing a podcast at a trade show, you're going to be speaking no, on this I'd podcast. Love to. Well, <laughs> bring the uh, bring the Tim Tam <laughs> Tim Tams with you. Oh yeah, you have yeah. become my mother's favorite with Less regards <laughs> with regards to the way you Tim Tam slam. So yeah. we're going to make that a tradition. Um, Asama, why don't you remind people about what you do and Fantastic. about Roasting House? Sure, sure. First of all, thank you uh, once again, Lee, for having me in this wonderful, wonderful podcast. And I I hope that uh, uh, people listening and seeing this podcast, listening to it, um, uh, benefit and enjoy as much as I do uh, and share it because it's really important to to share what how the vibe is about the Mm -hmm. coffee industry for those people who cannot come to the events and and, and see how wonderful it is to connect with producers, with uh, roasters, with manufacturers and uh, and just have fun uh, and and talk about the challenges and the opportunities together. Uh, My name is Osam Al Awam, uh, co-founder of The Roasting House, one of the first specialty coffee roasters in the region. And we're delighted to be, uh, alhamdulillah, part of this wonderfully growing uh, uh, industry in the region. Uh, we're proud to be uh, also saying that the region has become from consumers only to leaders, alhamdulillah, in producing fantastic specialty coffees. Mm. You go uh, any part in the GCC and you're not worried about having fantastic coffee because everybody likes great tasting coffee and an, an amazing experience as well. So it's not just about coffee. It's also about the, the service. It's about the vibe. It's about the sweets and the desserts. Uh, and it's about uh, also now we're seeing a trend towards uh, catering for the brunch style as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 coffee shops where uh, it's, it's just really exciting and it's just setting the trend to be and uh, the, the bar to be extremely high up there, which is great for consumers. It's great for businesses because they have to think outside the box. So I'm really delighted to be once again back here. You, you don't do. You don't strike me as the kind of person, and I, and I follow you on social media, so I know that this is a fact. But I, I've never had the kind of perspective of you that you're someone who settles for the status quo. Absolutely not. Yeah. Why? Because if you're happy with, if you know, there's always that good feeling of contentment, happiness that you've, you know, you've achieved. Yeah. But I think, and I, I always remind uh, my, my colleagues uh, uh, at the office and at the branches that the number one competitor in the market is not your next, ro- next door roaster or cafe or producer. Uh, it's you yourself. Uh, if you are able to compete with yourself as to how you can be better, how you can innovate, how you can create without giving pressure on yourself, you need to be easy on, your, on yourself as well. But uh, just searching deep there and seeing how you can improve your life plus somebody else's life when, when it comes to a new product or uh, a way of brewing or a way of enjoying their coffee uh, and you see those shining stars in their eyes mm-hmm. that 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 just makes it really well well worth to, uh, you know your while to go to the office to go to the branches to to meet people uh, to travel 
and continue doing what you do. So status quo is, is, is nice, but it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Yeah, it's a blue ocean strategy, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and that kind of mindset is what leads to you having to experience what you just experienced a few moments ago. Yeah. Why don't you tell everyone what happened? Well, alhamdulillah, I'm really delighted to be uh, uh, awarded. Uh, for the best new product award by Congratulations. the Special Association. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it's a Show product, us the, pro yeah. the trophy. Yeah, it's it's a product that we're delighted to have developed in house, and it's the first of its kind in the world. To Lift have it up a wee bit. That's the best new product. Yes, that's the best new product. And, and we invited you onto the podcast before we before even knew know, that yeah. was even going to happen. That yes, was a lovely, exactly. lovely surprise. Yes, Alhamdulillah. And I really, this is the first time we share this on, on any of our social medias uh, yet. So I'm really delighted to have Thank this you. exclusive uh, uh, showcasing Thank you. Of, uh, of this award. It's a product. Alf you, Thank you so much. And it's a product that I'm really pleased. Show it people what the product is. It wasn't is. just me who developed it. It was the team. In fact, it was entirely the team's ideas. So this shows that Alhamdulillah, we're going the right way when it comes to delegation, when it comes to enablement, uh, the, both male and female uh, uh, inclusivity. Associates, yeah, associates of the roasting house. And mm -hmm. the inclusivity is to enable everybody, no matter which position they are in, and giving them the opportunity to participate in developing the product. Wow. This is a product that we've bought uh, from Hario, uh, which comes as a set of filters in, inside the bag. And we thought, that's great. We solved the problem. How do we make it even better? Okay. So we took the, the, the filters out. And uh, Omar, uh, in our marketing team, uh, devised a, uh, a bag for the filter. Okay. Where there's a separator inside, which separates the filter away from the coffee. Because the moment the coffee touches the filter, this oh, is when wow. the moment uh, extraction starts. So there's no cross-contamination of the filter uh, with the coffee until you're ready to brew. So you, take, you, t you, you tear the sachet out, you take the filter, you put it on your cup comes in a box with six cups, six, fil six filters, six bags, and then you pour the coffee on top. And then when you're ready, you start the extraction and you've got fantastic uh, brewed coffee, ground, ready to use, with a valve, which enables the coffee to stay fresher for longer, breathes out, so it's Nitrogen not flushed? Not, not yet, no, okay. no, because the valve is there, so all the excess uh, okay. gases would be eliminated, uh, still keeping it fresh as well, because it's a, it's a multi-layer bag. Um, and then the cup is just there with you to go. The coffee has been pre-weighed for you, so you don't need to use scales. You just need to use a timer if you want, and you, you just pour the coffee as you go. And what's the shelf life on one of those? It, it can be up to a year, year and wow. a half. It can be up to a year, year and a half. Wow. Sure. But we encourage people to use, just to buy just as much they need for the next couple, couple of months. weeks. Yeah, couple oh, of couple months weeks. Well. Yeah, a couple of months is fine, but a yeah. couple of weeks to, to make sure that it's, it's fresh. It will last. I've, I've had coffee that... Uh, that's stored in the bag. We've, we've tested this for about a year and a half. So we've wow. had coffees stored in the bag with valve, without a valve, ground and then degassed for certain uh, hours, ground and not degassed. So we've really tested the heck out of this yeah, wow. uh, before we could, uh, we could come out with this product. But I'm really pleased that uh, the team has developed this product entirely on their own. Uh, being enabled to do, to do so uh, also means that you're giving them the opportunity to participate in creating the, the future of coffee uh, and uh, this this will only pave the way for new products to be better than ours which we're happy because that means that we're continually developing and innovating it's a great mindset um, and especially it leans into the theme of this yeah. series which is about how do we empower the coffee industry in 2024 yeah uh, how do you see that empowering the coffee industry in 2024 is an extension of that mindset uh, it's imperative that you, there is dialogue there's always dialogue with wow. your suppliers, with your, because the weakest link are always those who are weaker in that uh, yeah. ecosystem. So the suppliers, the producers, the farmers, uh, because they're, they're, you know, they're spending an entire year trying to grow your coffee. Uh, so you need to make sure that you're communicating with them, uh, dialoguing with them. If there are errors, issues, problems, you, you communicate with them. It's not about, it's, it's an agricultural product that no matter how much effort they put in there it's uh, it's being governed by nature right right god's will so there is only there's only so much you can do to make sure uh, that you can continue to develop this product by sharing by uh, creating dialogue we've been able to uh, dissect our coffee produce for specific regions into uh, sizes screen sizes and we're happy to share this with anybody who wants to learn this is this is not pure 
data that we want to own exclusively for us. So we're happy to share for anybody wow. who wants to come along. Open see source. How we do, absolutely. See how we do quality checks. So see how we um, uh, created margins for uh, specific sizes on specific lots to create acceptable sizes. Uh, so we share it with our producers and say, look, guys, you know, fantastic job. Can we try to eliminate this to make it better? Uh, and we're happy to uh, also uh, uh, negotiate uh, the, the contracts because we know there are there are things that that need that mean certain financial impact. And we're right. you know we're we're always about shared value. It's not just added value; it's shared value. There is a great value. I will share it with you as a producer. Amazing. Yeah, and uh, enablement and dialogue is is really key in this industry. Uh, it's not about exclusivity; it's about inclusivity for everybody. And we're always we have a, uh, uh, an open door policy to our factory. It's the first of its kind in the Middle East to have a fully automated line, so people can come, learn, develop, and be better than us and bigger than us. Inshallah. I can't wait to come and see. You're it. always welcome. Thank you, Habibah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's gonna be. I'm gonna be heading to Saudi sometime in the next month or Great, so. So I'm gonna. Briyad. Yes. Briyad. I can't yes. wait to come see Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Done. Inshallah. 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 Um, when it comes to the next couple of years, what's your viewpoint on whether it's going to be a volatile couple of years? Is it going to be a stable couple of years? Where, what are you seeing? Well, we're seeing volatility across the entire economic, Everything. Yeah, economic <laughs> Everything. and political ecosystems yeah. that, that surround us. So, yes, there will be volatility, but with development, const, constant innovation, uh, persistence. Uh, I mean, it's, it's so hard, but once you get there, once you do it, you can win awards. Yeah. So, yeah, you absolutely can. Yeah, you yeah. absolutely can. But it's, uh, this is the, the beauty of it, is you need to constantly be out there challenging yourself um, uh, uh, despite the, 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 you know, there's shipping challenges now. There's some things that you absolutely cannot control. So don't blame yourself for the things that you, you cannot control. Delayed shipping, one month, lost contract, there's nothing you can do. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. But volatility is there. So uh, it's, it's always nice to be conservative when it comes to your projections. Um, but also be dreamy, a little bit dreamy as well. Allow we're, yourself. A f- we're a fan of the dreamers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, allow yourself to be dreamy uh, because you can achieve things, really. Yeah. Um, and with volatility comes uh, opportunities, right? Mm. Um, I mean, it's not always a down market for anything. Uh, there's there's always someone that can win in a down market. Well, there's always problems to solve, right? Yes. And yes. so when we do consulting work, we the first thing we want people to do is manage their mindset around Fantastic. find the problems that need to be solved Fantastic. and monetize the solution. Fantastic. Absolutely. I love this. I love this. Yeah. It, th- that's where you'll find yeah. that's yeah. where adaptability lives. Absolutely. In yeah. in that sweet spot is yes. where you'll find it. And I find that there's you know, some challenges ahead for our industry over the next couple of years. Yes. But even in those challenges, there's mass opportunity Absolutely. for empowerment. Absolutely. If you had to talk towards empowering the workforce, yes. what advice do you have for, for people that are in the workforce? Well, g- give them the opportunity. Give yourself the opportunity. Uh, be proactive. Uh, some of the products that we have launched could not have been launched without a proactive approach from the team members. Really? Absolutely. If, if you're not, if you have ideas, don't think of them as potentially stupid or less important. We're always, always eager to learn and develop ourselves and listen. Uh, we've had uh, canned products that have been launched for the first time. We, we never launched uh, beverages, but this is a product that we wanted to approach uh, from a different perspective. We sell uh, cold brew extraction machines. And the best way for us to sell it is not to just bring this 60,000 dirham machine and put yeah. it on someone's table and say, hey, look, hey, buy this. Yeah. We created the canned project by, uh, product by one of, uh, one of the development team members who said, look, we can sell it if we show what the product yeah, you, can what, do. What you can do. We've been able to secure contracts as Walk a result of Walk the talk. That. Absolutely. absolutely. It's, uh, it's hygienic. It's tasty. Uh, people love it. We sold tens of cans every single day when the product was was available wow. um, hundreds actually not tens uh, and it's it's a beautiful product that you can create uh, uh, and it all comes out of uh, proactivity so I encourage everyone to be proactive uh, don't be shy present your ideas uh, your ideas could be the, the the solution to problems we have faced ourselves we don't necessarily know everything as you know executives or leaders where we don't know what we don't know so your, your ideas, your proactive approach could be a solution uh, to, to one of the problems that we think. And find the environment that supports this, uh, uh, this mentality, this approach. 
uh, and it's one that alhamdulillah we're, uh, we're proud to have in the roasting house uh, and i'm proud to have a wonderful team that uh, can get awards for themselves <laughs> mabrook congratulations thank you you know, as a leader, how do you approach those conversations with your team? How do you how do you create a culture and environment that allows you to approach those Acknowledgement. conversations? Acknowledgement. 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 So no matter how uh, uh, you might think that you know the uh, the achievement is small, uh, acknowledge it. Whether it's with a simple thank you or an acknowledgement in front of their colleagues or a celebration. Uh, we've we've eaten more cakes in the past few months <laughs> 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 because we celebrate we celebrate the achievements of our yeah. team. Alhamdulillah. Oh, that's great. And uh, when when they see it, they feel that they can do things, they can achieve things, and yeah, then they great. they give more. And when they give more, they get more. And when, it's not just the financial but aspect. But culturally, it's, that's how we are, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we feel like we receive when we give. Alhamdulillah. Culturally, yeah, in the yeah, Middle East. Yeah. 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 Alhamdulillah. And y- you feel sometimes that you know. When you give, it's it's not just the joy of giving; it's also the joy of feeling that you're satisfied that you've given, you've you've achieved yeah. something. So it, it goes beyond the financial reward. It, goes it beyond, really does. It it goes back to yourself for sure. Yeah. Amazing. What is your? What's the thing you're most excited about over the next two years? Saudi coffee and Arabic coffee. In Saudi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gahwa Arabi. Gahwa Arabi, yeah. Gahwa Arabi. Yeah. Uh, there's an aspect called, Sa- or there's a version of it called Saudi coffee because it's Kholani, it's grown in the south of Saudi Arabia, right. it's registered to the United Nations as a, a, as a non, uh, non-tangible cultural asset. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a beautiful product. There, there are protocols for the uh, Arabian Majlis to roast, to grind, to serve, to to host and you know all the incense uh, and, and everything Amazing. that goes uh, but this is uh, again culturally sh- shared across with our GCC brothers uh, uh, around uh, and so uh, it's a type of roast that is lighter uh, but again it's it's shared when it comes to the protocols the only difference is we grow the coffee um, uh, and have specific you know uh, uh, spices to go along with it mm-hmm. and this is what I feel the younger generation are more involved into feeling more um, um, I don't know, proud, I guess, about about the nation, what's going in, in, in this part of the world, the developments that are happening, the, the enablement, the empowerment, the openness, uh, uh, and the future that they see is extremely bright, uh, and they're very, very passionate about it and dreaming. So they feel connected to anything that feels connected or close to their culture as well. So if it's Arabic coffee, you, you feel them also burning the incense and enjoying the spice mix and learning more about the, the, the coffee produce mm-hmm. uh, or the coffee uh, brewing uh, uh, aspect and feeling very connected to it. In fact, uh, we will have the Arabic Gahwa uh, uh, Championship in Abu Dhabi. Uh, yeah. It's already started on the 19th. Yeah. And I'm, I'm proud to be... you judging? Yes, alhamdulillah. I'm alhamdulillah. proud to be the head judge for the uh, light roast, uh, the Gahwa light roast uh, alongside wonderful people whom I'm really excited to learn shout from. out to Sara Ali. yes, yes shout out <laughs> you to know Sarah. she's my yes, favorite absolutely. Bless her no, heart, mashallah. no offense but she's my favorite Sarah, mashallah, we've learned I know, so mashallah. much from she's her amazing. journey uh, uh, and we've learned so, so much from her as a person she's uh, she's very uh, passionate about what she does and she's not shy to share uh, no, any of the all. details so shout out once again to Sarah and all the judges inshallah there who will yes. be who will be once again uh, for the fourth uh, time yeah. uh, participating in this uh, wonderful championship curated by the Department uh, of Culture in Abu Dhabi. Mm. A beautiful. Both the Saras. Sara al Khure Kaman. Sara al Khure and Sara al Ali. Yes, the yes. two Saras, I call them, yes, in, in yeah. the yeah. Middle East. Yeah. Um, we're very privileged to, um, I, I guess, to witness the growth of Saudi in the way that it's moving. Yeah. It's just phenomenal how do what role do you think that coffee is going to play in the 2030 vision a, a huge role we've seen really? developments by the uh, public investment fund to create the saudi coffee company which uh, uh, has a mandate to enable the coffee industry in saudi arabia whether it's growing or it's uh, uh, enabling the the projects the local uh, uh, businesses to to be more involved more engaged uh, open uh, uh, open platforms that are difficult for uh, for businesses to open as opposed to a government backed mm-hmm. project uh, so the saudi coffee uh, company uh, has a, a huge mandate and we're really delighted to be uh, in dialogue with the, with the saudi coffee company awesome. to share our concerns to share the the challenges that we have so we can find ways to uh, to mutually collaborate with uh, with this behemoth that that is uh, uh, created by the saudi uh, government by the mm-hmm. public investment fund 
to resolve uh, any challenges, especially when it comes to growing coffee in 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 uh, in such uh, uh, challenging conditions. I mean, they grow coffee at well over 2,000 meters above sea level in mountains that, that are very remote to come in uh, where water is scarce. So uh, it's a big challenge, but uh, it's it's a major contributor to the national economy of Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, we've had about 20,000 uh, commercial registrations for coffees, wow. uh, coffee shops in Saudi. The uh, the quality of life program uh, see, uh, has, a, has a mandate to increase the amount of coffee shops per capita from what it's currently at, at 530 coffee shops per million to double that. So 1,060 coffee shops per, per million, million per million in the year 2030. Uh, 15 million trees will be grown, uh, for coffee trees will be grown to hopefully uh, uh, provide some of that uh, required supply. So there's self-sufficiency, uh, there are uh, enablers to, uh, to uh, penetrate the market more. Uh, we've seen Saudi projects start from small, very, very, very small projects to chains, to franchise industry locally and outside of Saudi Arabia, wow. alhamdulillah. So we're seeing, we're seeing a, a huge support by the government on this. And the way is still long, but it's it's absolutely doable and the pace is fantastic. Yeah, wow. Very exciting. Like, I'm very excited to now be based here in the Middle East and to be able to witness it up yeah, close and yeah. come drink your coffee and yeah, see how yeah. beautiful your cafes are. Yes, and yes. I can't wait. We established also the uh, CASA, uh, the Gahwa Association of Saudi Arabia, okay. so, uh, alongside our fellow roasters. Uh, in the industry to be the voice for uh, for specialty coffee wow. uh, cafes, roasters, and producers and suppliers. Uh, uh, so Casa has been kicked off now. Uh, uh, we they will also participate in future uh, World of Coffee events, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, they will be enablers for anything to do with training, with uh, uh, with uh, beautiful uh, growing. With and uh, I hope inshallah there are ways to to mutually. Uh, connect with uh, other players in the industry inshallah with, through CASA you never know maybe we come and do the podcast absolutely. in Saudi one day absolutely inshallah. Absolutely. there will be an office for CASA and uh, uh, we'll be delighted to uh, to welcome uh, guests from all over the world to come and, and witness how Saudi coffee specialty coffee and, and conventional coffee culture yeah. is is booming yeah inshallah mm. thank you so much Asama second last conversation doesn't disappoint which is awesome bless you we sign off our our episode for us with what we normally say peace love and peanut butter <laughs> thank you sign off for us peace love and peanut butter peace love and peanut butter have an amazing rest of your day everyone bye okay. i really hope you enjoyed this episode friends please don't forget to show us some love by subscribing liking commenting and most of all sharing this podcast with your friends check the show notes for links including our sponsors and our patreon and stay tuned for more great conversations on the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward.